people them. If you read further, you will see that you know the, the, the gift of the spirit, the um, dif diversity of spirit or different kinds of spirit or different kinds of tongues began to manifest because the people began to hear them praising God and worshiping God in their own languages. So we know the outcome of that story of that of that of that chapter was 3,000 people on that day were added to the church. Why? Because they received and when Paul and Peter, the Bible says these men came around saying these men they were mocking them, saying these men are full of new wine, they are drunk. And Peter, look what did Peter say in response? It says, These men are not drunk as you suppose. But it says, But this is that that was promised or spoken by the prophet Joel. It says, You should it says, um, I will pour my spirit up in those days upon my handmaiden and servants. It says, I shall be, they shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Your young men shall um, dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And your, on your hand minutes and your, on your hand service, they shall, shall feel the Holy Spirit, and they shall prophesy. Anyway, so he was talking about that they shall begin to manifest the gifts or the power of God to begin to manifest. There is a difference between receiving the Holy Spirit as a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, which is, by the way. The Holy Spirit is not a force, he's not a wind, he's not fire, you know. Though he may manifest as, as a wind, he may manifest as fire, he may manifest in different manifestations, but that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Bible makes, makes us understand he's the third person of the Trinity. He's a person, and as a person, he has a will, he has emotions, he can be grieved, he can be joyful. He can be happy, you know, he can be just the same way as a human. You can be grieved, you can be emotional, he can be emotional, he can be joyful, he can be grieved. So we need to realize that the Holy Spirit is a person. And the Bible makes us understand the Holy Spirit is the anointing of God. The Bible says Jesus was called Jesus Christ. That Christ is not his surname. The Christ is a title. The Christ means the anointed one. He was the one that was prophesied. Remember when, um, I think it was Andrew that found Nathaniel, says, we have found the one who was prophesied in the scripture. So he was been prophesied that the anointed one will carry the anointing of God. And how we know when we see the anointed one? Remember what Jesus Christ, when he quoted from, in Luke chapter 4, when he quoted from Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah 60, there about where he said, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. And because the anointing, the Holy Spirit is upon me, now he has empowered me. Now the power has come to do the works of ministry. So that's the key. Number one, the anointing is the Holy Spirit. When he comes upon you, then he will enable you or empower you to do the works of ministry. Just like Jesus did. And that's why Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Then he also said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father. What does that mean? When I go unto my Father, I would release the Holy Spirit upon you, and when He comes upon you, He will anoint you and empower you to do the works that I have called you to do. The Bible says in 1 John 2.20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. The anointing, that word anointing in the Greek, actually connotes or means to smear or to rub upon. The anointing is a smearing and what if you look at the context in which in the old covenant in which they anoint their sheep, the anointing on the sheep was a smell on the sheep to, to pursue flies. The anointing is an aroma. So basically when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you would have the aroma of the Holy Spirit. One of the ways in which the anointing of the Holy Spirit resides upon you is that you spend time or there must be times of intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That is why we are supposed or we are to seek the giver and not just his gifts. It's almost like when someone gives you presents during Christmas, when your parents give you presents or you give your, your children gifts on Christmas, on Christmas Day. Will you, how would you feel if your child just comes and just takes the gifts and just ignores you. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not even thankful. They don't, they don't even say thank you for the gift. They just, just take the gift and walk away. So, but in, when we chase the power of God, when we chase His gifts or the manifestations, without wanting a relationship with the giver of the gifts, 
That is exactly what we are doing. So we must cultivate that relationship with the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We do that by spending time reading the Word. Now I'm saying reading the Word, meditating on the Word. I'm not talking about religiously reading the Word. Because remember the Old Covenant, or even the scribes and Pharisees, they all read the Word. They read the Word, but they read it religiously. There was no life in it. But Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus also said to us that when the Holy Ghost comes, he will teach you. He will speak to you. He will guide you into all truth. He will commune with you. He will fellowship with you. What am I trying to say? We must have fellowship with the Holy Spirit based on the word. One of the ways we do that is by meditating on the word. Let the word become alive in your spirit. So you're not just quoting logos. You're not just quoting logos, but you're speaking rhema. That is why Jesus said, I think it was Matthew 4, I think it's verse 4. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every, that word he used there was rhema. But by every rhema word that is spoken by God. So when you spend time with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit would quicken the word. He would bring the word to your remembrance. He would enlighten the word to your heart. He would teach you the word. Number two, the Holy Ghost empowers us to do the works of Jesus. We've said that before. Number three, the Holy Spirit will teach you. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, says the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Number four, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. So we must realize, number one, or number five, that we are anointed. We are, we, that's why the Bible calls us Christians. That word Christian means little Christs or Christ-like. What does Christ-like mean? It means you are like the anointed one. Why? Because you carry his anointing. The same anointing that rested on Jesus rests on you. And that same anointing will empower you to do the works of Jesus. Hallelujah.